Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my channel, Traveling with Jose. I'm Jose, and for today's video, I want to talk about different ways to prepare for boot camp. Now, these are in no order of importance. These are just ideas that I brainstormed, and I thought these would be ideas that would help you on your Navy path. These are things I wish I would have known right before going into boot camp to make my life easier, so here they are. I want to make your life easier. Let's begin. So first things first, of course, you're going to have to be fit when you go to boot camp. Now, you don't have to be too fit. I would say if you're depping in and you have maybe three to five months until you go to boot camp, 30 minutes a day, that's all you need, really. All you have to work on is running, push-ups, and sit-ups. Now for running, I would say guys, uh, running a mile and a half would be mm, around nine to 11 minutes. For girls, it would be like around 11 to 14 minutes. I don't know all the requirements because it all depends on age and uh, weight, height, and you know, your BCA. So I would recommend to look that up. This one is very important. Know how to swim. Because if you don't know how to swim, you're going to have to keep going back to the pool and that takes time out of other things you could be training on. I had friends that couldn't pass their swim tests and they would have to go swim every single day. Also, if you don't pass the swim test by the end of boot camp, you will be held back. So keep that in mind. Another part of the swim test is the prone float. The prone float is where you float with coveralls on for about three to five minutes. Sorry, I don't remember. But three to five minutes and you just float there. If you pass the swim but you don't pass the float, you'll also be held back. And you'll also have to keep going back to the pool. So know how to swim, know how to float. Along with working out, we also have this thing in boot camp called IT and I believe it stands for intense training they will work you out like if you were at a gym like if you had a personal trainer and trust me it is not fun at the end you end up feeling a little bit great but in that moment you don't because you're wearing your whole uniform and you're working out in boots so if you want to be ready for that IT workout so now let's talk about diet now in boot camp you're gonna take courses on nutrition not because not everybody knows how to eat well what not to eat, what to take out of their diet. In boot camp, there's two things that I believe happen. You can either leave boot camp really fit, really lean, really healthy, or you can actually leave in a worse condition than you were. And that's because of the choices that you make with what you eat. Now in boot camp, there's a lot of food. There's a lot of good food, actually. And with all the stressors involved, a lot of people tend to go towards sugar, and they do have these sugary cereals but it's up to you to control what you intake I know there was a point at the beginning of boot camp where I was all about eating right uh, not having sugar in my diet but towards the middle and the end I kinda fell through and I had a lot of cereal a lot of cinnamon toast crunch and it's not good don't do it to yourself maintain a good diet throughout boot camp before leaving for boot camp Hang out with your friends, hang out with your family as much as you can because it'll be a while before you see them. Boot camp alone is uh, two to two and a half months and it, for some of you that haven't left home and haven't left your friends, that can be a long time for you. And after that, schooling, it was five to six months before I saw my family again. Now that I'm in Japan, it had been a year and a couple months before I saw my mom and my sister. So hang out with them, enjoy your time with them before you leave. Also, if you didn't already know, there's a lot of boot camp videos out there. Watch them. Watch them all. Everybody can give you a little bit of information that you need to know. Of course, a lot of things change with boot camp and the boot camp video. I know it's a couple of years old, so some things have been taken out. Uh, for example, I know girls don't have to cut their hair anymore. Guys, you do still have to cut your hair. Oh, which brings me to another point. Guys, you don't have to shave your head before going to boot camp. I know you might be ready and whatnot, but even if you have barely any hair, they're still gonna scalp you. So, might as well just have a little bit up there for them to scalp. Before you leave for boot camp, I would suggest to have a box ready to be sent to you wherever you go. Because after boot camp, you don't go straight home, you go to school. So, if you want your clothes, uh, your shoes, I don't know, anything else you might have, have it in a box so that your parents or guardians can send it to you. Now, another thing that you should do before boot camp is study your general orders, study the Sailor's Creed, look up facing movements, and that's uh, 
different ways that you march and uh, how to compose yourself, how to take orders when you hear the orders that are given to you. Also look up rank structure in the Navy. I can tell you that I am an E3 and I've been an E3 since I got into the Navy because I had done ROTC before. But you start off with E1 and it goes all the way to E9. If you can't learn about the Navy's history, you are going to be in for a long time and you're always going to be asked about Navy history. This is what you represent. So, study up. This is not really a big deal, but get your passport before boot camp. Because after boot camp, you might be really busy and you might not be able to get a passport. I know some people come to Japan without a passport, and that's because they can use their military ID. But, if you want to travel around this side of the world, you're going to need a passport. And who doesn't like to see their passport being stamped out? And let's say you are underway, you're in the ocean, and you need to leave because of an emergency. Let's say a death in the family. And the closest country to you is a country where you need a passport to leave. If you don't have this passport, you're not going to leave for this emergency. And that's because of the laws that this country has. And your ID won't cut it. So, get a passport. Don't take anything to boot camp, ROTC, that you wouldn't want to throw away, donate, or send back home. I would say simple shoes, all your documentation, your phone, and that's it. If you take a lot of stuff, you can't keep it in boot camp. They're going to give you a box, and you can fill that box and send it home, but I don't think it's worth the money, it's worth the trouble. Uh, your clothes, like I said, if you take something simple, you can donate it in that very moment. If you can, have money saved up. You do get paid during boot camp, but it doesn't hurt to have money saved up beforehand because you're going to be spending a lot once you do get out of boot camp, once you go to school. You're going to be spending a lot of money after boot camp, so it's best to have money saved up. I want to say this kept me a little bit more sane during boot camp. Take a mini calendar. Take something where you can write out what's going on. Have a diary. You know, mark off the days. Something to motivate you. Along with that calendar, have a little notebook of people's addresses and people's phone numbers. You don't know how much you need this until you get there because you have the option of calling your friends maybe once, twice a month and that's it and you only get a few minutes. So if you don't know their number and you can't contact anybody, well, you should have planned ahead. I know I had my mom's and my sister's phone numbers saved in my head but there was other friends that I wanted to really talk to. I didn't know their phone number so I had to just Wait, Tuesdays or Wednesdays I think you can receive letters and then Sunday you can actually reply and mail them out. So it's important to have people's addresses and have a lot of addresses in your notebook because not everybody writes back immediately. So uh, another thing that will motivate you throughout boot camp is having those letters with you. Which brings me to another point. Also in that mini notebook calendar, have pictures. Have pictures of your family, of your friends of the moments right before boot camp, something to motivate you during boot camp. I know I said to have all your original paperwork, including your social security card, but memorize your social security number. They're not going to have time for you to go through all your paperwork and look for your social security number. Have it right up here. And I want to say 99% of you have a phone. I would say put that phone on hold. I know I had, uh, I have actually, T-Mobile and I put my phone on hold and I only pay for that hold fee so when I went to California uh, a few months ago I called T-Mobile and they immediately unlocked my phone and I was able to make calls and you know surf the web I had to pay like eighty dollars for that whole like two weeks that I was there you don't have to cancel your phone bill completely. If you tell the phone companies that you want to put your phone on hold because it's military related, they'll let you do that. Make this a habit before you go to boot camp. Drink a lot of water. You're going to have to drink a lot of water during boot camp because of all the exercising that you're going to do. And this is also a method that they teach you so that when you get out to the ship where it's hot a lot of the times, you're going to make it a habit to drink a lot of water. A lot of your time is going to be spent on your uniform. One of these items is your boots. And in the military, well, here in the Navy, they like your, the front of your boots to be shined. And you can actually get it shined enough where you can see yourself. There was a lot of people that acquired that skill in boot camp. I, unfortunately, was not one of them. I am so impatient when it comes to shining boots. But it, makes, it does make you look better. And it's a little way of showing off in boot camp. So learn different ways to shine boots. 
Uh, you might see on YouTube that there's ways you can shine your boots with lighters, but you can't have lighters in boot camp, so learn different ways. Spit method. Look it up. You're gonna have to clean a lot. You're gonna be cleaning every single day now for the rest of your life in the Navy. And this, like I said about the water, where it's training you for the boat, you're gonna be cleaning the boat every single day. You have a certain space to maintain, so you have to be prepared to clean every single day. And once you get out there to the fleet, you'll know what I'm talking about. Be prepared for no personal space. You don't have your personal bed, you have bunk beds. 50 plus bunk beds in one room. You share the shower, you share the toilets. The toilets don't have doors, just so you know, I know I wasn't prepared for that, but they have curtains, but sometimes they're ripped or uh, they're not even there. So, no curtains to cover up. So be ready for that. Also, all the guys are going to have to shower together and all the girls are going to have to shower together. So that's something that you have to prepare for. And when you're showering, be prepared to only have five minutes. I would suggest making it a habit to get ready faster, brush your teeth faster, shave faster, shower faster, eat faster before you go to boot camp because that's going to be your lifestyle for two months. And last but not least, start making a habit to wake up early. In boot camp, you're going to wake up early and go to sleep somewhat late, you're going to feel like. During boot camp, you're going to be waking up at 5 in the morning and going to sleep at 10 at night. Your days are going to be long. So those were all my brainstormed how to prepare for boot camp ideas. If you like them, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, if I didn't explain something enough, go ahead and leave a question. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep on watching my videos. Like I said, every two weeks I put out videos. And if you don't follow me already on Instagram or Facebook, uh, I'm going to put the link up on Instagram. I share everything that I do in Japan, all the festivals that I go to, all the friends that I make, uh, all the foods that I try. And on Facebook, if you go ahead and find it, I think when I'm underway, it's a better way for me to message you back if you have anything that you want to find out. And as always, thank you for watching. Arigatou gozaimasu. Ja, matane. Until the next video, bye.